Hi, I'm Marcus Green, and welcome to number four in the series of interviews with the people behind Moodle. Today, I'm talking to Sander Bagma, head of Moodle LMS. And the topic today is the release of Moodle 4.0. Good morning, Sander. Um, I wonder if you would uh, tell, tell me a little bit about your background and your role with Moodle. Yeah, absolutely, Marcus, and, and thanks for, uh, for inviting me to have a, have a chat with you. Um, I'm the head of Moodle LMS at Moodle HQ, and that means that I'm responsible for the Moodle LMS platform. Um, so within that, I set the product strategy and the roadmap for Moodle LMS. And of course, I do that together with the team at Moodle, uh, but also very much with the Moodle community and all the stakeholders that we have within that. Um, and then we work with the team to break up that roadmap into, into items we, um, we schedule for the various Moodle releases, um, just like we've done with, with Moodle 4 that's uh, about to come out. Now, Moodle 4 represents uh, one of the bigger uh, updates. There's been a bigger gap between uh, big number updates. And I wonder if there is, if you could pick out, and perhaps it's a little unfair, but a single headline feature in Moodle 4.0 uh, that would persuade people to uh, start using it as that their main system. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is it is a, a tricky question because uh, there's an awful lot of good stuff in Moodle 4, but the the headline change for Moodle 4 is really the improvements in the user experience, uh, making it easier for educators and trainers to create and edit courses, uh, making it easier for learners to prioritize and complete their coursework. So. Uh, Moodle 4 is quicker, more intuitive, more efficient to use, uh, which really means that teachers can focus on their teaching and learners can focus on learning. And that's, um, yeah, that's really the headline item. You've rather stolen my thunder with my follow-up question there, uh, which I was going to ask about uh, updates to the user, uh, about the updates to the user experience, and that, I think that yeah. illustrates that, that I've been very focused on that. Um, but what is it that drove those changes? Because uh, one's, one person's easy to use is another person's, I don't understand it. Years ago, people would constantly tell me that Facebook was easy to use, but because I didn't use it, um, I, I found it deeply confusing. So what is it that drove those changes? Um, well, Moodle as a platform uh, has been around for 20 years now, and all throughout that time, we've accumulated many features, many amazing contributions from the community, from Moodle HQ itself, uh, and that's resulted in a very powerful platform. Um, but at the same time, we also received the feedback from our end users, from the community, that while the platform is really powerful and very flexible and extendable, it's not always easy to use. Um, so when we talk about our mission of empowering educators, we also need to ensure that all these great features are easy for them to get to and easy for them to implement in their courses. So as part of Moodle 4, we had the objective to optimize the user experience for the most critical and commonly used tasks. And uh, we went about this by doing lots of research and putting the end user really at the center of everything that we did. Um, and we also wanted to create a more contemporary look and feel to, to make Moodle feel more like the platforms everybody's used to nowadays. So we did lots of surveys and workshops with educators, learners and administrators. And then we prioritized those findings into the most critical areas. And really the biggest changes uh, are in those common tasks for educators and learners uh, that I, I touched on before. That sounds like you're addressing what I uh, humorously refer to as normal people, because as a developer, I know I'm a 20-year veteran of Moodle. I'm, I'm not a normal person. Um, I know that there's been some significant enhancements to the, uh, the quiz question bank, and I wonder if you would be able to describe uh, what the key changes and the benefits are to that, in that. Yeah, ab absolutely, Marcus. Um, it's a project that I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased with because it really shows the contributions that are made by the community. So this is driven by the, the Moodle community and a number of, of universities. Um, and that shows the, the true power of open source as the community contributing back to the platform. Um, 
some of the key benefits of this amazing project is that the question bank, which underpins the quiz activity, now has an improved Moodle plugin uh, infrastructure. So that means the question bank is more extensible. Uh, it can be further customized. Um, and there's some really nice new features that have been added there. So questions can now clearly show performance statistics very easily, uh, giving useful information that you can use to create quizzes and adapt your questions as you go. Um, we now have the ability to add comments to questions. So that's uh, important information that you might want to remember or share with other people. Um, but also importantly, uh, we now have question versioning. So uh, as questions evolve, as you're adapting quizzes or tuning it for different, different audiences, you can keep track of all your older versions and see the different impact um, and also have different quizzes that refer to different versions of the question. So it's uh, some very powerful extensions there. And there's more work to be done actually for, uh, for Moodle 4.1 on that. So looking forward to it. I'm very excited by those changes. I'm a long time quiz user. And the idea of, of um, information on what I trivialize as how difficult a question is, uh, I think is really, really useful. And the other you mentioned that it's possible to create plugins for the question bank. I've experimented with that. And in a very short amount of time, I was able to create a proof of concept for a plugin that would uh, update the text of questions. I'm not necessarily going to release it or claiming it's a good thing, but it's pluginable. It's, it's very exciting. And when I talk about the Moodle qu quiz uh, system, I say that it's the, it's the most powerful quiz engine available anywhere, free or paid for. So these kind of enhancements I find are very exciting indeed. Um, now, as I, I refer to my own plugins, and I've been testing my own plugins with a beta of 4.0, and I, I found the updates to be very straightforward. In fact, I spent more time updating the tests than the actual code. Uh, how difficult and how quickly are you anticipating other sorts of uh, plugins to be uh, compatible with 4.0? Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, we've got an extensive ecosystem of plugins out there. We've got about 2,000 plugins available in the Moodle plugin database. Um, and we've worked really hard to maintain compatibility for existing plugins. Um, and that means, you know, for Moodle 4.0, we didn't really introduce any major API changes. Uh, most plugins should continue to work with very little effort. Um, certainly, when we look at uh, activity plugins, um, it would be very useful for them to review some of the navigation changes in Moodle 4.0 and think about how they might want to uh, update any navigation within those plugins themselves. Um, I think, so on the whole, the, 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 the changes required for plugins will be fairly minimal. Uh, but if you look at Moodle themes, it's a slightly different story. And there are significant changes to the Boost theme. So if you do have a custom theme that you're using or maintaining, then uh, it will take a bit more effort to align that with the Moodle 4.0 changes. I took a, a, a mod plugin that had nobody changed in seven years, and in one evening, it seemed to work beautifully in 4.0. So that's I think that's uh, really optimistic. And also, as you say, though, that themes will uh, require some some additional work. Um, you mentioned there about Moodle 4.1. Uh, are there features that we should be aware of that are likely to land in 4.1 that didn't make it in 4.0? Um, I wouldn't say necessarily that didn't make it in 4.0, but we, we have sketched out the landscape already for 4.1. Um, partially, I want to have a little bit of capacity on our roadmap to uh, think about follow-up issues that might come from some of the changes we're making now for 4.0. It's significant changes. We'll get more feedback as Moodle 4 uh, starts to get used out there by, by all of our end users. So um, I'm sure there's going to be some feedback and we'll be working on that. Um, but really 4.0 is the starting point for us for a longer journey of improving the user experience all throughout Moodle. So uh, for 4.1, will we be working on um, improving the user experience inside the activities of the Moodle course? Uh, we'll be taking a really close and deep look at uh, the Moodle Gradebook, which is a very um, extensive, complicated, and important tool. Uh, and we would love to make that more easily accessible for the average users, just like you mentioned before. Um, so we're continuing on with those UX improvements. Um, and as mentioned before, uh, we've got some changes to Question Bank. We've got further changes coming for that in Moodle 4.1. Um, and 
really um, what I'd like to see as well is us to work further on the MoodleNet integration. So we've got MoodleNet up and running live now. We can already send content from MoodleNet into uh, an LMS course, but we also want to be able to send uh, content from LMS itself back into MoodleNet. So that's also another project that we'll be working on. Uh, one of the things we haven't mentioned so far is the new report writer feature. Um, could, you, could you give a brief description of, of what it is and, and what are the potential benefits for users? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, uh, the new report builder is really a reporting engine that we've now integrated in Moodle, originally developed for Moodle Workplace. Uh, and I'm really happy that we can bring that into the LMS and that shows some of the benefits as well of having this <coughs> workplace um, variant of an LMS out there and we've seen the benefits here um, in, in the overall Moodle open source LMS. And um, it'll really help us create consistency around reporting all throughout Moodle. So now we have the reporting engine, we can already create some custom reports and some system reports. Um, and these custom reports you can make available to specific audiences um, that you want to expose the report to. It could be teachers for a particular course, you can create a report for them and make it available. So that's really great. But over time, what we want to do is, is really take this engine, this API, and make reporting uh, in Moodle consistently use the report builder. So all the reports will have the same look and feel, will be very powerful. You can customize it, drag in various columns, reorder them, do aggregations, do filtering. Um, so it's really a fantastic step forward towards creating more powerful reporting options in Moodle LMS, which is certainly something um, the community has been asking for for a long time. I, I feel disproportionately excited about that. I'm almost embarrassed that, you know, to be excited about a new report builder seems to be just a little bit geeky, but it's, it's about for any educator to know, to be able to, to filter and sort and find out what's going on in your system is so important. And as a, as, a, as a developer, very familiar with SQL, I have never underestimated how difficult it is unless this is your area. And I, I think this is really, really exciting uh, new feature. Um, you mentioned the uh, Moodle Workplace, which is the, um, the, 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 the version that is uh, available from uh, Moodle partners, such as, such as Titus, aimed at the, the commercial um, uh, market. Um, how, when do you expect the uh, uh, 4.0 equivalent of Workplace to be available? Yeah, absolutely. So um, that's currently being worked on. We're just about to release Moodle LMS 4.0. Uh, work on Moodle Workplace 4.0 is underway. Uh, and we're expecting to release that in July of this year. So um, two or three months away. Excellent. And, and the last thing, this is a, a sort of a thing that really struck me, um, is the, the user tours have been significantly enhanced in um, 4.0. Uh, certainly to be more visually appealing. I wonder if you could give a little bit, bit of a, a backstory to the updates to both the, the ones that ship with it and also the enhancements to what they can do. Yeah, absolutely. So um, user tours are quite an important tool to help people onboard into any platform. You can see it now in any sort of modern tool or, or software that you download. It's got these little helpful hints that quickly show you around and show you all the key items. So. Uh, we wanted the Moodle user tours to more feel like those really nice, helpful hints. So we updated our user tours. You can now add uh, different types of text. You can add images, even little videos and things. Um, and that creates for quite a, a nice, lively and visually appealing sort of little hint that can pop up. Um, and um, yeah, we really took the opportunity then to, to say, okay, we've got all the old user tours. We're no longer going to use them. And really for Moodle 4, we want to really highlight those key changes. Um, making people familiar, both existing Moodle users, because there are some significant changes in there, uh, and we're highlighting those. And at the same time, that it will also help new users as they're coming on board, because it will show them how the navigation works, it will show them the course index, it will show them collapsible uh, blocks drawer, uh, it will show them how to turn editing on and start, start working on your course. Um, so it's really a tool to help onboarding in Moodle easier and reduce that barrier to entry into the platform. I, I am. Thank you very much for your time, Sander. Um, as you can tell from the smile on my face, uh, I, I'm really excited by this. I'm always excited by Moodle, but I'm really excited by this and looking forward to 
uh, the, the final version coming out. Thank you very much for your time today. And um, we look forward to seeing the, uh, the release product and getting our hands on it. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Marcus. I uh, enjoyed catching up with you. Excellent. Thanks. Bye-bye for now. Bye.